Do you know what? I've definitely missed some of that action this summer. But the question is, what e-mountain bike do you take with you to have a bit of that action? Do you go for a bike such as the Canevo at 180 mil travel? Or maybe the super light Levo SL, 17 kilos, 150 mil travel, 160 up front. Or the Levo, 21 kilos and a 700 watt hour battery. Let's have a look at the 2021 Specialized e-mountain bike range. Now when it comes to specialized Levo e-mountain bikes, the first question to ask is what type of rider are you? And as it says in the marketing, do you go for light and nimble with Levo SL, uh, weighing in at maybe 17 kilos, or do you go for powerful and planted with bikes such as the Levo and the Canevo, which start at 21 kilos? So let's have a look then at some of the motors. So let's begin our look into the 2021 Specialized E-Mountain Bike range by beginning with the flagship S-Works SL model. Now, as you can see, it's a full carbon chassis from front to back, uh, carbon wheels, SRAM axis electronic shifting. You've got Kashima shock on there, Kashima fork. Plus remember, the big difference for the SL in 2021 is that it's got 160 mil Fox 36 fork on there. I really, really like that. What would you call that? A coppery graphic. Some really powerful brakes there in the Maguras and a bike that weighs in around about 17 kilos. Now, at the heart of the SL is this little uh, motor, which weighs in at 1.9 kilos, which makes it one of the lightest e mountain bike motors in the market. Uh, it's got 35 newton meters of torque. Now, I've ridden this bike at length. I've also ridden it in different countries, and one of the biggest problems of traveling with e mountain bikes is, of course, the battery. Now, you can actually remove the 320 watt hour battery in the down tube, and you can fly with a 160 watt hour battery. Now I weigh about 90 kilos and I can get about two and a half thousand feet of climbing on that battery alone, which is a huge amount of range. I love how they've got some pedals on here from maybe 1943. Uh, anyhow, this is the Levo SL Expert Carbon. Now there's four bikes in the SL range. Uh, they begin at uh, £5,250 in the UK and up to this flagship bike here, which is £11,500. Uh, I quite like this, what would you call it, burnt orange? I think it's officially called Redwood. Uh, so this is the SL Comp. This is actually a 2020 bike, but it's essentially the same bike for 2021. Uh, the reason they haven't got one is, is because they are obviously sold out. Uh, now these guys cracked me up because they've now got some pedals from the 1980s era, guys. Where'd you find all these old pedals from? Anyhow, I shouldn't be joking. Uh, I think the importance of a great store is that there are going to be test bikes available for you to try. So uh, come and try out an SL versus a Levo versus a Caneva, which we'll talk about a little later on, because it really is a key part of the experience to know exactly what type of e-mountain e biker you are. Are you more of an adventure rider? You're, are you more of a gravity type rider, which means the Caneva would suit you? So get down to your uh, specialized concept store and check the bikes out. Now again, this is the top of the range lever. Again, it has SRAM axis electronic uh, shifting and a seat post on it. Uh, full carbon frame, including the swing arm and the front triangle. Again, you've got Kashima uh, shock on there and a Kashima fork. Uh, like I said earlier, the, the uh, Levos now have a Fox 36 fork up front uh, and slightly longer travel, 160 mil compared to 150 last year. Uh, the bike is 29 inch wheels, front and rear. Uh, and it has a 700 watt hour battery on the carbon versions. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I weigh 90 kilos and I can get around about five and a half thousand feet of climbing on a 700 watt hour battery and about 26 miles, just to put it in perspective. Now, whereas the motor on the Levo SL weighs in at 1.95 kilos, the motor on the Levo weighs in at Oh, crikey, that's an ounce. I think it's about 2.6 kilos, or 2.6, 2.7, anyway. I think uh, the interesting thing about motors is people obsess about motors, but ultimately, I think we're now getting to a point where we're starting to think about what type of bike we're riding, because let's face it, you can probably have as much of a difference in weight between a set of tires as you will from a difference between, say, an SL motor and a Levo motor. 
Uh, now, there are four different versions of Levo, obviously with different colors within that range. Now, the Turbo Levo and the Turbo Levo Comp are both alloy bikes, whereas the Expert and the S-Works are full carbon versions. Now, I talked about earlier about the Levo, the S-Works Levo, which came in at 11,500 uh, pounds. It's not all about the big money. This is the Turbo Levo, 4,500 pounds, exactly the same geometry, exactly the same wheel size and travel. Actually, it's got a different fork up front. This has got a 35 fork, a RockShox 35 fork up front. Yes, it's a millimeter uh, thinner than the Fox 36, but nevertheless, a big hit in fork. Some of the details on this bike, you've got a seat dropper, you've got a 220 mil disc up front, and of course, that guide RE brake, which has got the old code caliper on it. Uh, a 500 watt hour battery on this bike, but really, when you look at the difference in weight and performance, it's not really that dissimilar to the S-Works. And finally, the Specialized Kinevo, because let's face it, if you want to get involved in some serious big mountain action, then this has got to be one of the bikes that is near the top of your list. 180 mil travel, front and rear, comes in two models, the Comp or the Expert. The Comp has got a 500 watt hour battery compared to the Expert, which has got a 700 watt hour battery. There's also a difference in the fork up front too. The Expert's got a triple clamp fork, whereas the Comp has got a single clamp fork. Uh, coil shock on the rear, both bikes have 27.5 inch wheels and a, a thing you really need to think about is the fact that this bike at 180 mil travel, front and rear, will probably climb not far off the same time as a Levo. The question I guess everybody's asking is do you go for a fantastic bike such as the S-Works Stumpy Evo, which comes in at about 9,000 pounds, I think, uh, 14 kilos, full SRAM access, and this, the Forest Green, or I'd call it British Racing Green, uh, Specialized Turbo Levo SL Comp, weighing in at, I'll tell you how much it weighs in at now, actually, that weighs in at, 18.1 kilos and price-wise 5,250 pounds. Actually, this is 6 to 50, not 5 to 50. So it's a really, really interesting question. You come into a mountain bike store these days and you're faced with a huge amount of questions. Do you go for a traditional mountain bike, which weighs maybe three or four kilos less than say a Levo SL? Or do you go from maybe the 35 need to meter Levo SL weighing in at 17 kilos? Or do you go up to a Levo with a higher uh, capacity battery, say 700 watt hours, that's gonna weigh maybe a few kilos more or do you go for that big mountain bike, which is behind you here, Josh? The uh, Specialized Kinevo, weighing in a little bit more, but still with the same ability to get up those really steep technical climbs. Huge amount of decisions. Guys, let us know your comments. What do you think about these very beautiful bikes? I think the colors for me are what, what does it. I certainly like this uh, tint red bike over here. Um, Look at it, amazing. But at the end of the day, you do not need to spend five figures on an e-mounted bike because I think the pick of the crop for me is that uh, turbo lever there at 4,500 pounds. So, are there any changes then as far as the motor goes on the new 2021 Levos? Well, apparently not. As for the new motor software, the things which have changed are not really noticeable for the rider. The motor has exactly the same power curve as before, 90 Nm and a 565 watt peak. No, what has changed are small things on how that electrical power is distributed. The original software did have some bugs where in some odd cases, firstly on the startup or stopping pedaling, the motor for milliseconds had peaks on the belt. Those have now been ironed out. And what about the shock tune? Well, some people have mentioned there have been tune changes on the new Levos, but it does seem that for the DPS shock specifically, they actually did not make any tune changes for model year 21. As mentioned, the new Levo has Fox 36 160mm forks up front, and some models also have new colorways. But I have to say, they all look pretty good, from the Carbon Levo S-Works in that new red tint, to the Levo Expert Carbon in Gunmetal Red Bud or Cobalt Blue, which really does look a winner. Then you have the two alloy versions of the Levo, the Levo Comp and the Levo. Now the Levo Comp comes in black, metallic oak green, redwood or spruce, whilst the Levo 
Evo at £4,500, comes in black, brassy yellow, which is a winner, and clay like the one I looked at earlier. Now moving on to the Levo SL, that has 150mm forks up front, the Fox 36 uh, on the top end version. The S-Works has new colours here in carbon, bronze foil, not copper as I mentioned. The Levo SL Expert in carbon has cast battleship or redwood colourway options. And the Levo SL Comp Carbon at 6250 comes in cast berry, storm grey and rocket red, although a bit more like blue, and a tarmac black and gunmetal finish. Uh, and finally, the Levo SL Comp coming in at 5,250 pounds in dusty turquoise or rocket red. And let's not forget that big hitting Canevo with 180mm travel in dual crown or single crown options and of course different sizing methods from S1 up to S5. Now the Canevo Expert comes in at £7,000 and is available in black or sage green or the Canevo Comp at £5,500 in dove grey or gunmetal. So, in five years, e-mounted bikes have come a massive distance. We've now got Turbo Levo stores, such as this one, Certini, here in North Bristol. And thanks, guys, for letting us uh, come and use your store. And like I said, e-mountain bikes have come a long way. This up here is the Specialized Levo 6 Fatty from only 2015. It is quite remarkable how far the sport has come. Let's know your comments down below and let's have a discussion about what e-mountain bike we all need to ride.